Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that I should. And all that's well, cause I'm gonna dwell on everything. God, that you have given us, to, Lord, tonight, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would be, Lord, in these next few moments, God, and I just pray, God, that our hearts will be, Lord, open to receive your word, Lord, and Lord, let, God, your spirit rain down on us, Lord, I pray. I pray, God, that the glory of the Lord would fill this place, Lord, and I pray, God, that my words would be, Lord, from you, anointed of God. And Lord, I look to you tonight. Lord, I just pray, God, that you would just touch each one that has taken the time to come into your house tonight. I pray blessings upon them. I pray healing and deliverance, Lord. And I just pray your spirit, Lord, would rest upon them. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I wanted to share a little bit 
on the as I've been sharing on Wednesday nights about the Holy Spirit and I wanted to share a little bit about tongues and interpretation of tongues as Jesus commanded here in this scripture before he ascended into heaven he gave a commandment first his commandment that I didn't read was to go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature and he that believeth and be baptized shall be saved. And those that don't receive the Lord will be damned. You know, it's just plain and simple. But he also talked about signs that would, that would follow those that would believe. Are you a believer tonight? Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful that God's Spirit came down upon me when I was just a little child. Yes, I was raised in church thank God for it and that's what the world is missing today it's missing being found in the house of the Lord that's what this nation needs we need to get back to God's house we need to get back to the things of God and we need to believe not just say that we believe but that we would act in our faith you know it's one thing to say well you believe in God but we've got to remember in the scriptures that it says well even the demons believe and tremble. Amen. We've got to act out our faith in Jesus Christ. It is so very important that as Jesus spoke in the scriptures before he went up into heaven, he told them that this is what will follow you as a believer. In my name you shall cast out devils. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know that you have power through Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that when there is times in your life, even as a little girl, I, I knew I could go to my dad or my mom to, and have them pray for me when I was sick or to have them lay hands on me and believe God to touch me. I'm thankful that I can call on Jesus' name tonight. Hallelujah. And and at the name of Jesus, we have power through Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's through His name and no other name where men must be saved. And I'm thankful that we can call on Him. That means that if the enemy comes in in our lives or into someone in your life, we can pray. We can we can ask the, uh, the uh, we can ask the Lord and we can say we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm thankful for that tonight. And there's been plenty of times, even in our ministry, I can remember, and I know we've shared it before, but it was ever so real to us when we were in the midst of it. And it was an Assembly of God church, and we prayed for a young girl, and she had demons in her. And at first she just came and she wanted prayer. But then when, you know, when the, the demon manifested, it was a whole different situation. Because, see, that spirit rose up because it didn't want to leave its dwelling place. But we began to pray in the name of Jesus. And that girl was set free that night. Hallelujah. She was set free. See, we've got to remember that, that, you know, there is the power of Jesus, but we got to know that Satan has power over people. A lot of people say, well, I don't believe in the devil. Well, you're, you're being buffaloed by the enemy, you know. You're being fooled, you know, because there is also a righteous power, but there is also an evil power that is loose. And that's why we've got to claim the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I was, um, I think it was Reuben that sent me a, a video, and this man was, he was in this satanic, all kinds of rituals and everything, and he said he could tell when certain places that he would go into, he goes, he knew he didn't have the power in, 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 in Satan because he knew that there was people, and it showed people gathering around. It wasn't a lot of people, just a handful like tonight. You know, gathering around and praying in the name of Jesus. And he said he knew that he did not have the power, that he was not welcome, and he, there was only so far that he could go. That's why we need to be encouraged tonight that we have power in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And he also said, and they shall speak with new tongues. Oh, I'm thankful tonight for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it's not just for one person, but it's for all. Hallelujah. I was reading in the scripture in Isaiah 28, 11, where Isaiah prophesied by the Spirit, where he said, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost. Now I know in the world that we live in there are people that are not for tongues but I just don't see how they get around the word of God because it is for today and if we will just humble ourselves and let God use us and to fill us he will do that in our lives. Hallelujah. The gift is for everyone tonight. Hallelujah. The gift God has given to each and every one. He didn't just say a group of people over here that would receive, but it was for all nations. It was for every tribe. Hallelujah. For those that were hungry to receive that gift will be filled. Hallelujah. And the gift of interpretation, hallelujah, it wasn't just for one people at one time, you know, it was considered just, you know, just the Jews. But as I was reading over in, um, in Acts, I just was reading this in my scriptures, in my daily devotion, the story of Cornelius. He wasn't a Jew, he was a Gentile. But uh, he was very righteous and he was a devout man of God. And it said that the Spirit, the angel of the Lord came to him. And he said, you know, in you know, direct order what was going to take place. And that God was going to bless him and God was going to pour out his Spirit. And even at the same time, while God is moving and touching Cornelius, the Lord is dealing with Peter. Because see, it was going to be Peter that God was going to use to go to Cornelius' house. And to pray and to move and to see mighty, powerful moving of the Holy Spirit right there in his home. And that's what took place. Because, see, it was said, you know, as he had this vision, shared as Peter had the vision, and it said it come down, and he said the voice spake unto him once, and then it spake to him again, because he said, oh, I, I will not touch anything that is unclean. And then it says in, verse, in Acts 10 of 16, this was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again unto heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which had been seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before him at the gate. And that merit, that's a miracle in itself. That right then and there, while he has this vision, God is revealing to him that it's not just going to be for one nation. It's going to be for everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. That God was going to pour out his spirit upon the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful Amen. tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it said when Peter, then Peter opened his mouth, he came in. To Cornelius' house. You know, Cornelius fell at his feet. And, and he said, oh, you know, get up. He goes, I'm just a man. He goes, but God has sent me here. And in direct order, he even said, you know, Peter's going to come. And he's staying, you know, with someone. And he gave the direct order. And this was of God. And it says, then Peter opened his mouth. And said of the truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Hallelujah. And, and then it says later here in the scripture, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them 
which heard the word. Hallelujah. Amen. It was not just for one, but it is for all. And it is so very important. It is the gifts of the Spirit, and we need them. As I was just praying here this morning, Lord, let the gifts and the operation of the gifts be manifested in this church. Hallelujah. I don't want to quench the power of God. I want His Spirit to go forth. Amen. You know, a lot of people say, well, those tongues, that's not for today. And that's, you know, some people even say that it's of the devil. Dear Lord, how could we ever say such a thing? And, and as I was reading in, the, in Genesis, we all know the story of the, the Tower of Babel. You know, the men in the beginning, they got so high and they got so mighty, they thought they could conquer the world. Until so finally God came on and He humbled them. And it says that He confused them. Their language, their tongues were changed to where they could not speak to one another. They didn't understand each other anymore. And I truly believe that the tongues, the gifts of tongues, was to break that confusion. How many know that God can come down? You know, I was reading in a story, I think it wasn't, I'm, I'm trying to remember where it was, but where there was speaking in tongues. And there was a man in the service that was foreign. I forget where he was from. But he said that that language that she was speaking was his language. He understood every word. And I believe the gifts are in operation for us. The tongues and an interpretation. It is for those even that do not believe. That's what the scripture says. Praise God. Tongues are a sign to the unbeliever. As it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 22, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. You know, there was mention of, you know, we've. I'm trying to get in contact with him. He's He gets out of here too quick that I can't get a hold of him. But that brother Ben that's been coming to our church on Sunday morning, and, um, you know, there was manifestations of the Spirit the last time, I think two Sundays ago, that He was here. And, you know, some would say, well, that might scare them off, you know. But really, it's a sign to the unbeliever. It's a sign that this is of God, especially when there are tongues and there are interpretation. We've got to remember that they are in working order. We've got to make sure that we are having both, hallelujah, not just tongues, but tongues and in interpretation. It says in 1 Corinthians, I want to read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it says, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret it. So a lot of people will think, well, you know, that I'm speaking in tongues, but I'm not. But you need to pray and ask God. That was one thing I had to say. Now, first, I did not have the interpretation. And I always thought to myself, how do you know? How do you know that, you know, that you have it? I, I always remember one. It was a Wednesday night service. I'm almost positive it was a Wednesday night service. And Mary was up here praying for Dad. I remember she she must have been led to pray. I think we came in and it was in the middle of prayer. And she pray, she was praying. And after the prayer, I think she began to speak in other tongues. And while she is speaking for the very first time, it was so powerful, I knew right away, I, I really can't explain it to you, but I knew God was giving me for the very first time the interpretation of tongues. Now, yes, did I have to be led and say be obedient to the Spirit? Yes, I could have said, no way, God, I'm not doing this. But I was obedient. And I said, Lord, I know, God, that you will fill my mouth. And I know, God, that it's going.
going to come out the way that you want it to come out. We've got to be obedient to the Spirit. It's the same way when we receive the gifts of tongues. God gives us that gift, but we've got to be yield our tongue and we've got to yield it to Him. He isn't going to move our mouth for us. We've got to yield our tongue. When God's Spirit comes down upon us, He will manifest Himself to through us when we yield our spirit and we yield our tongue and our body over over to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to yield myself to the Lord and I want to pray. God has given us this gift not only for messages and in the church and interpretation, but this is also a gift for your prayer life. Now, I want you to know, a lot of people say, well, I don't know when the Spirit comes on you. No, this, this is something that when God gives it to you, you use it and get, keep it in operation in your life. This isn't just a one-time event. This is something that's supposed to be flowing from your life every day. That is, that's why God gave it to us. Hallelujah. I want to read in Corinthians 14 so you can have an understanding. 14.22, just a little ways down from where I was reading. I'm sorry, not 22. 14 and 15. It says, For I, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with understanding also, and I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Now over in Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. When you're going through something, I, I can recall too, I'm just sharing my experiences, but this isn't just for me, this is for you. Now I can't recall if this was the first time it ever happened to me, but I truly know that it was the Lord. I, I sang a song, and Dad was up here, and I think he was really, really going through a hard time. He was just... You could tell his spirit, everything about him was just really in battle. And when I got down off that platform, I could just sense his spirit was coming on me. And I stopped right in my tracks. And I sat right there on the front pew. And I just felt this spirit, the Holy Spirit come on me. And it wasn't the gifts of tongues, but it was a groaning in my spirit that came up within me and I began to just groan in the spirit and later on dad told me that that was for him he felt a release in his spirit in his body he knew that that was for him and that's what the scripture says here in, in, in 826 so when you're in prayer and that comes on you, that you don't know who that's for. See, the Spirit already knows. But see, you don't might not know what's going on in someone's life or in your family, uh, the things that could be going on, and the Spirit can see those things taking place, and the Spirit can come upon us, and, and, and that's what this Scripture says. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The Spirit also... It, it says, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. Sometimes, you know, when we get down to pray, we don't know the direction. The Spirit gives us direction. And the Spirit can lead us in a different way. And it says, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. And I truly believe when we're speaking and we're believing God in that unknown tongue, the devil can't come through that. That's your, your prayer language unto God. Hallelujah. There's power when we stand firm in the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, it makes me think of the song, and I know it's not in our hymn book, but oh, 
for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. Hallelujah. And I believe that if we have the gifts of the Spirit in operation, let's not be afraid. Oh, no, but let's be reverent to God. But let the Spirit be allowed to pour out on us. Amen. Let the Spirit, you know, to be allowed to pour out. See, He knows when you're willing and you're open to the things of God. And He knows when someone isn't. And the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He isn't going to push Himself on anyone. He's going to come down on those that let the Spirit move in their lives. I want the Spirit of God to continually move in my life. Because each time that that Spirit comes down upon you, it's not only doing a work in maybe someone else's life, but I guarantee you it's doing a work in you. Hallelujah. And I want more of the gifts of the power of God in my life because it's the Spirit that gives utterance. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll give you that utterance. Hallelujah. And then you begin to speak it out. Yeah, sometimes I say it might sound like mumbo jumbo. But it is the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. It's that to you, but it's not that to God. God knows. Hallelujah. And it's His divine power coming down in your life and transforming you and using you. Hallelujah. I want to be used of God and I want to be used of the Spirit. How many? Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that I should.